Good morning everyone. I am Pranitha Singh from the Hills Grammar School. I would like to thank our team marking question 13 for their professionalism, their dedication and perseverance, especially marking under the COVID times. I would also like to thank um, our supervisor of marking, John Dillon, and my, my the, the leader in charge of question 13, Warren Black, for their great support to all of us during this process. Now, in terms of question 13, our team felt that the question was very accessible to most students. There were three parts oh, to this question. The first part was a fairly straightforward stock standard extension one integration by substitution question. The second was the volume of solid of revolution. And the third was a rather different derivative of functions. The first two proved fairly simple and relatively easy to mark. The third posed a few issues. We think students were not prepared enough to answer three and four mark questions, which this question had, and that posed a few problems in them attaining all their marks. Most students attempted at least one part, if not all parts of this question. So let's go through a few things, like I've said, um, in terms of four marking, three and four mark questions. The, this question involved some detailed algebraic manipulations, which students fell short of. The setting out of formal proofs with proper validation was also lacking in many attempts. A number of students simplified part CI and CII and attempted both of them as a single question. And as a result, we had to come up with an alternate mark scheme for this part. So in the first part, it was a very straightforward question and was worth one mark. The more able students found it very easy to work out and they achieved their mark. Some variations where students separated it as the product and hence used the product rule and many achieved this and got it correct a few made silly mistakes and then lost their mark some common problems the knowledge of the application of the chain rule was lacking and the misuse of trig identities for those of them that went down that path for part ii it was a substitution the more able students engaged in it very well and got their four marks. Some students who had to work with the limits of integration with respect to theta and find the derivative of tan theta had issues in doing that, but many got one mark. Students who understood substitution and changing of terminals were successful in attaining four marks. Some of the common problems were engaging with substitution proved difficult to some, and hence they failed to arrive at the correct answer, even though they persevered with the incorrect manipulations of sex squared theta. A few realized they needed to use part I, so tweaked their working to equate their incorrect integral to arrive at the correct answer. There were several students who were able to connect part I and II and arrive at the correct simplified result. Generally, this question was answered pretty well. Part B involved the solids of revolution. Now here, for four marks, there were four very distinct parts to this question. They had to find the point of intersection, dismissing sine x cannot be equal to minus one because the diagram, the area the region given was in quadrant one. Then they had to write the volume as the difference of two volumes. Then they had to use the double angle formula and in particular apply it to a cos 2x. And of course, the last part was integrating and evaluating. So students were able to access at least two marks with ease at distinct steps of their working. Many could link part I to this part and arrive at the solution succinctly. Many integrated the functions correctly with the correct manipulation of the limits of integration 
to obtain the correct numerical solution. And of course, those more able students use the double angle formula correctly. Now, some of the common problems were firstly realizing the regions of the functions and hence writing the correct order of the volumes. Another problem was they needed to know the expansion of the double angle formula and in particular if the angle is doubled, so cos squared 2x ended up as cos 4x. And they need to know that the volume of solids of revolution is the difference of the squares of each function rather than the difference of the entire functions. Now, part C was a relatively straightforward question if you looked at it at face value, but students tended to go in circles in terms of finding the derivative and then the function. So the first part was given two functions, one a trigonometry and one an algebraic function, and they had to find the derivatives of each and equating them. So the marking scheme had two sets of solutions, one from NESA and the other as an addendum. Using the NESA scheme for CI was explicit, yet this four mark question proved very difficult to mark. The more able students who were comfortable with differentiation got their four marks at ease. Obtaining their first mark was simple as they needed to show just one part of the correct differentiation of each of the functions. The confusion, the problems here were the confusion and difficulty in marking this question came from either using Nessa scheme for part I, then looking at the addendum for part II. Uh, man manipulation of the quotient rule proved challenging for some, especially working with the negative. It was easy for a student to go in circles, as I mentioned previously, by obtaining the derivative of function g from function f, then differentiated g again. It was common for students who had made errors to still earn at least one mark. Now, with the alternate solution, we looked at students, a number of students did this, where they used the right angle trigonometry and used a fairly simple method of obtaining their answer. But with this method, we had to look at students working with the restricted domain. They had to acknowledge that the domains were restricted and many of them lacked that. So the common problems for the alternative solution was recognizing natural domain restrictions for trigonometry as well as rational functions, and then testing, finding a proper correct conclusion by testing both sides of the domain for each function. And of course, recognizing the constant of integration. So for part C, many students were able to get at least one mark, but by confusing or by mixing up the various methods they either omitted domain restrictions or incorporated stuff that was not required. So I think that's about it. Thank you very much.